In this video, we'll build a simple dynamic model like this in just 15 minutes. First, we'll create assumptions to forecast our revenue. Then we'll work on our fixed and variable expenses. Third, we'll work on our income statement and all the profit margins. And finally, we're gonna make it dynamic using the scenario analysis on Excel with a cool formula you might not know. So let's get into it. So here's the Excel model that we'll be working with, which you can download for free in the video description to follow along. And as you can see, we have two main areas, one being the income statement, which is all of this here. And then down below, we have all of the different assumptions for a total of five years, as you can see up over here. Let's assume that this is for an e-commerce business, so it could be like an online clothing store. First up here, to forecast our revenue, we're gonna need to look at our assumptions. So if we scroll down towards the bottom here, you can see that for revenue, we have a few different assumptions. First, we've got the number of orders, which we're seeing we're starting at 3,000 orders. And then we've got the average order value. So the price times the quantity is gonna give us the total revenue. And to forecast this forward, we simply have an order growth rate here. Let's suppose that we're hoping to grow by 100% on the first year, and then 75, 50, and finally 35%. So with this information, we can go ahead and scale out the number of orders. So we would just go equals this previous year's figure multiplied by, in brackets, we're gonna do one plus the growth rate, which is 100% in this case, close the parenthesis and just hit enter there. And then once we have that first number, we'll go shift right and hit control R there. And you might have noticed here that some numbers are in blue while others are in black. And generally the convention here is that the blue numbers are those that are hard coded. So you just type them in yourself while the black ones here are dynamic. So they're linking to something like a formula or a cell. Now that we have the number of orders, we can also work on the average order value. And let's assume that this stays fixed throughout the five years. So we'll do control V there. And now we can work on that first line item for us, which is the revenue. This is going to be equals to the number of orders, so the quantity, multiplied by the average order value, so the price, and hit enter there. And again, we'll do shift right and hit control R there. Now that this first step is done, we can now move to our expenses. We're going to have two main types, fixed and variable expenses. So you can see if we scroll down to our assumptions, we have them per order. So these are the variable ones, meaning that they change per every order that is made. And then down below, we have those that are fixed in nature. So things like salaries are gonna stay fixed. Same thing goes with our marketing expenses. So let's go ahead and scale these out. So for manufacturing, we're saying that it costs us $6.5 to say create that t-shirt. And we can simply drag that across and just hit Control R. Same thing goes with order fulfillment. So this is things like putting it in the package and getting it delivered. So we'll hit Control R there again. One thing you could do, depending on your assumptions, is maybe as you have more orders, this is gonna start to get a bit less as we're going to have economies of scale there. So if we order in bulk, we're probably gonna get some lower prices. Then further down below, we have the warehouse rent. Let's suppose that this stays fixed. Salaries and payroll, marketing. So this is how we're actually going about selling this stuff and other. So this could be things like accounting or legal fees. Let's just scale this out by hitting shift right and control R again. And let's suppose that for warehouse rent, as we have more orders, we could switch this out to something like 30,000. Hit enter there and just drag that across and control R again. Same thing with salaries, maybe as, as we get more orders over here, it's, it's a bit too tiring to only do it with one person. So we might double that to 100,000. And again, we'll drag that across. And for marketing as well, maybe to reach this type of order numbers, we need to scale this out. So we need to make this bigger. Maybe we do something like 50,000 here and eventually we're gonna reach 100,000. Same thing over here, like so. And finally, for other, we'll leave this fixed. Right now, we've made these assumptions in a fairly simple manner. And later on, we're going to create the different scenarios. So this could be, for example, an optimistic case. And we're gonna have a different set of assumptions for a pessimistic case. So we can kind of adjust and see how that would look. Finally, we've got the corporate tax rate. In this case, we just said it's 20%. We'll hit Control R there. This is obviously going to vary depending on where your company is incorporated. 
With all this information, we'll now be able to bring it up to the income statement. And speaking of financial statements, if you're looking to learn more about financial modeling, you can consider checking out our complete finance and valuation course, where you can learn all about financial accounting, corporate finance, valuation, and financial modeling on Excel. First, we cover financial statement analysis using Apple's real annual report as an example. Then we'll get into financial modeling through a three statement model. After that, we'll begin the valuation phase where you'll learn to do a discounted cash flow, a comparable company's valuation, and a present transactions valuation on Adobe, looking at their real financial statements to eventually derive a valuation range. Lastly, we'll show you how to present an investment thesis using a stock pitch format. So if you're interested in checking it out, head out to the link in the description below. All right, back to the video. Now that we've calculated all of the assumptions, we can work on the income statement and the profit margins. So let's go back up over here. And the first line we have is the manufacturing, which is gonna be equals to the number of orders. And let's lock this one so we can drag it across. So we're gonna hit the F4 key there and you'll see there's a dollar sign and we just wanna lock it by the row. So we're gonna hit the F4 key one more time. So that dollar sign is only by the 30. This way it's always gonna stay fixed to this number of orders and even if we drag it down, it's gonna stay there. Then we're gonna multiply that by the manufacturing because these are going to be on a per order basis. And we'll hit enter there. And now we can simply drag it down and hit control D. And we have that down over here. And if we click on it, you'll see how this has stayed fixed at the number of orders while this cell has gone down because we didn't lock this one, which is what we want. Then the total cogs is simply going to be alt equals. That's gonna sum these two over here and we can hit enter there. Then for our first profit margin, which is the gross profit, that's going to be equals to our revenue minus our total cost of goods sold. And the percentage here is gonna be equals to the gross profit divided by the revenue. And we'll hit enter there. Then to drag all of these across, we're just gonna hit the shift right and hit control R. They should all move dynamically there. Awesome. Now moving on to our operating expenses down below over here. So these are gonna be fixed in nature. So all we need to do is simply link them. So we'll link this first one and then we can just drag that down and hit control D. Then for the total, it's gonna be the alt equals is a shortcut again. We'll hit enter there. For the operating profit margin, this is gonna be equals to the revenue minus the total cogs minus the operating expenses and we'll hit enter there. As you might have realized, this is actually the same thing as going to our gross profit minus our operating expenses. Then for the margin here, it's gonna be equals to the operating profit margin divided by our revenue and we'll hit enter there. Then we can drag that across as well just by hitting the shift right and going to control R. Awesome. And finally, we've got the corporate tax. This one's not quite that simple because if you don't have a profit, there's nothing to be taxed on. And so that's where we're gonna have to create some kind of a conditional statement. So we'll do equals if, hit the tab key there, and the logical test is that this figure over here is less than zero. Now, if that is true, then we're gonna do an NA in quotations there. So open up the brackets, the quotation, sorry, hit the NA, close the quotations, comma, and the value, if false, is gonna be the actual multiplication. So it's gonna be the operating profit multiplied by that 20% corporate tax rate, and we'll hit enter. So that first one is an NA, and that seems about right. But if we drag this across and hit Control R, you'll notice how, how all of these are getting taxed, and that makes sense because they do have a profit in those years. Then for the profit or loss, it's gonna be equals to our operating profit minus our taxes, and we'll hit enter there. But you'll notice that this first one gives us an error. That's because we're trying to do a minus on an, a text. So Excel's not able to understand that. So what we're gonna have to do is put an if error in front, hit the tab key, 
And this is gonna be in the case where there is an error, like it's currently the case. First, we want this value, but if the error does happen, so value if error, then we're simply gonna want the operating profit amount, which is gonna be the negative loss for us. And we'll hit enter there. So that first one, we have a loss. And then as we drag that across and, and hit control R, you'll see how we start to have a profit. And so it's gonna be this figure minus the tax, which equals to our profit, which makes sense there. Finally, in this last part of the model, we're gonna make it dynamic using the scenario analysis. So right now you might have noticed that we only have this set of assumptions. Let's suppose that we think this is a touch too optimistic. So what we need to do is actually copy this whole table. So make sure you drag it all, hit control C. We'll paste it once and then a second time down over here as well. What we're gonna do is change these assumptions. We'll call this one, this is the middle one right now and we'll call this the uppercase. And then in parentheses, I can say something like scenario one so this is going to be our first scenario and then down over here let's call this one the lowercase and this is scenario two close those parentheses and then the very first one we have up here is going to be called our live case as it's going to be the one that's reflected on the financial models over here so we've got the uppercase which as of now is the same as the live case and we've got a lowercase so for this lower case, let's change up the assumptions a bit because we felt like the first one was maybe a touch too optimistic. As you can see, we already have a profit after that first year, which maybe is a bit too aggressive. So first we can switch up the number of orders to say 2000 and you can see how all of that is going to change as well. Then for the order value, maybe it's more realistic at around 34.95 and I can drag that across as well and hit control R there. And finally, one more thing that I could change is maybe these manufacturing orders are gonna be higher at around say $8. So we'll go for eight there. And again, I'll drag that across, and control R. And finally, maybe the government decides to increase our tax rate to 25%. So let's see what that would look like as well. Great, now that we have these two scenarios, we just need to create some kind of a toggle up over here. So I'm gonna call this say scenario. And over here, we want to create a box that's going to say scenario one or scenario two there. So let me quickly format that. Let's say we go for putting borders all around it. So all borders, let's change the color there to something like a yellow. And I'm also going to center it and bolden it by hitting control B. Same thing over here. I'm just going to align it over to the right. Awesome. Now comes the part where we actually make it dynamic. That's by going to equals up over here and we're gonna use the choose formula hit the tab key there and that index number for us is the scenario so this one right here we'll hit the f4 key there comma the value number one is gonna be the first case so that's our scenario one is gonna be this figure over here comma and our scenario two is the lower case so this one right here we'll close a parenthesis and hit enter now, all we need to do is just hit Control C, Shift down arrow, Shift right arrow. We'll go to Control Alt V for that. And here, we basically don't want it to change the formats. So we want the second one in percentage, then this in two decimal places, and so on. So we just want to paste the formulas there. So that second one, and hit on OK. And you'll see there that it's done the job for us. Let's clean this up a bit by just removing these here. And same thing here. And this last one down over here finally we should change the color of all of these because now they're dynamic so they should all be in black like so now you can see that it's actually all gonna be dynamic so right now we're in scenario two i can change that to scenario one and all the numbers are gonna change in scenario one you can see that we have profit in 2024 if i change that to two you'll notice that we only have profit in 2026 that said, if I switch this out to a three, you'll notice that I break the model entirely. So let me go back by hitting Control Z. And to protect this, what we can do is go over to data, data validation, which is this tool right here. Click on that. We're gonna create a list. So we're gonna create a list here of just two values, which is gonna be one comma two. That's all we want. 
and we're gonna hit on OK there. And you'll notice that we now have a drop down of one and two. If I go ahead and try to put a three in there, you'll see that I'm gonna get an error. So that's exactly what we want. If you wanna see a more complex financial model, check out this video over here or take our finance and valuation course right here. Hit the like and the subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.